Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, January 25th, 2013. Before I get started, I want to welcome all my new subscribers to my channel. And before I get started today, I want to remind you guys that you can go to my channel and put in keywords in the search box if you're looking for a certain subject on how to repair something. I'm sitting by my shop computer now and I'll show you exactly how to get to that. So let's say you're watching one of my videos. You can see down here it says Donnie Boy 73 right here. So what you would do is go on there and click it. It's actually a link that will take you to my channel. And you're going to see a search box over here. It actually says search channel. So bring your cursor in that box and type in what you want. So if you want to look up at chainsaws, just type in chainsaw and then click enter on your keyboard or click over here and a lot of subjects on chainsaws are going to come up actually I put the chainsaw tag word inside some of my Q&A videos so that's why they're coming up but you can see here different things so most videos coming up are all about chainsaws or I have talked about them in my video and then you can click load more now let's say you're looking for a specific model of a chainsaw like an MS-170. That's all you need to type in there is just those keywords. You don't need to type in too much. And now you can see the videos on the MS-170 and 180 chainsaw. And then you can select which video you want to watch. And this video here shows how to repair the fuel line. So it's that easy. Now if you want to go back to my channel you just do the same thing. Click on the Donny Boy 73 link and you're back in the channel and you can go search again in the search box over here. Now some people have asked me where they can donate funds to me monetarily. Well there's a link here on my site and again this is all voluntary. I do not ask for anything from any of my viewers. You click here it will take you to PayPal and then you can enter the amount that you want. Here on my site I explain what I do with the money and I can assure you that it is being spent wisely. And I want to thank everybody who sent me some monetary gifts through this link. And I also put a link here by Small Engine Parts here. It's Repair Clinic so if you click on here it takes you to their website. And they sell parts for your lawnmower and also all your appliances in your home. I put the link to their website because they do have good prices and good customer service. I have ordered from them in the past, so I can tell you that it is a good place to order small engine parts from. Okay, so that'll be enough of that. My first question today is in regards to a video I posted previously in regards to diagnosing a total electrical failure on the 400 Suzuki Iger four-wheeler. And this is the video right here. You guys saw it a few weeks ago. Well, somebody asked me, why didn't you test the battery or do a voltage test on it as soon as it died? Well, I didn't test it because the loss of power was so sudden. To give you an example, the ATV started really good, and then 10 seconds later, there's no more power. It was a total failure. And because the ATV had done it more than once, and then I replaced the fuse, it was good. I knew the battery was still good. So that's why I did not test the battery in the video. And my next question, a YouTuber asked me, what do you do when you clean the carb in the chainsaw and it still won't run properly after? Now, I've touched on this subject many times in my previous Q&As, but I will bring it up again. What I do is I replace the carb kit in the carburetor if it still doesn't run after cleaning it. Usually when I crack open a carburetor, I do replace the diaphragms because once you pull them off, they can shrivel and they lose their form. It breaks the seal as to where the gasket is on the carburetor and sometimes you can have more problems if you take the carb apart, put it back together without replacing the diaphragms and the gaskets. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, that's the best thing to do. And if it still doesn't run after that and you've put a carb kit in it, then just get a new carburetor. For some people, it's more economically feasible to just go and buy a brand new carburetor right off the bat instead of buying a carb kit. In the States, you can buy these carburetors sometimes for like 25 bucks. Here in Canada, they're more money, so that's why we try to put carb kits in them first. But if you're not too mechanically inclined, I just suggest you go buy a new carburetor. It doesn't mean that that's going to be the problem of your saw, though. You could have some other more serious problem going on, so you may want to consider if it's worth spending the money to start with. 
My next topic is on how expensive some parts can be in other countries. And today it's particularly on shear pins for snowblowers. Some of the prices we pay here in North America aren't that bad. To give you an example, this is a shear pin for an MTD snowblower and the clip to secure it. Here in Canada, you'd pay approximately $2 for this, maybe 3 at the most for an OEM pin. Well, I had an email from a guy from Russia the other day, and he told me that just this pin here would cost approximately $6.50 Canadian, just for this. And they don't give you this little hitch pin here with it either. You have to buy this separately. Now this YouTuber told me that one Canadian dollar is about 30.7 Russian rubles. So he told me that it would end up costing $3.50 Canadian just for this. So the grand total for one shear pin with the clip, $10. Now that really made me appreciate the prices that we have here. It's unbelievable how much some of you guys have to pay for stuff. Even for gas in Europe is expensive compared to here. And we often complain here in Canada and North America that the prices are too high. I was so surprised to get an email like that from a Russian YouTuber that I just had to talk about this in today's Q&A. I just couldn't believe it. Now it'd be nice to mail some of these to my fellow YouTubers at a good price, but I'm sure the postage would end up making it not worth it. Now my next question is in regards to small two-cycle carburetors like this again. Somebody asked me when you take the carb apart, specifically the diaphragms off of the carburetor and you're left with some gasket material like this, like this black stuff you see here, what do you do? Well, what I do is I clean it off. I use a Scotch-Brite pad on my die grinder, clean it right off. It comes as good as new. You can also use a 400 or 600 grit emery sandpaper and clean it off good. Sometimes some carburetor cleaner will leak through it and get it off for you. Also, if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, it'll bring it back as good as new. So you don't have to throw your carburetor out just because there's gasket material left on the inside when you take the diaphragms off. Just make sure that you don't scrape it off and leave huge scratches with a screwdriver because then you could have an air leak or a fuel leak. Another YouTuber asked me the other day, why does my steel chainsaw stall each time I go to pick it up? I have replaced the carburetor kit in it, but it still does it. Well, what it could be is the impulse line. As you can see, this one here is cracked. Sometimes it can be hard to see that it is cracked when it's installed in the saw. And because most steel chainsaws have an impulse line, it's something you should check every time you replace the carburetor kit or you do maintenance to your saw. So the impulse line will be located down inside here between the block and the back part of the chainsaw, which goes to the carburetor. So always check that, especially if you've put in a new carb kit and it still acts up. You can also check the intake boot of the carburetor as well for cracks. Sometimes when you pick up your steel chainsaw, that's enough to get the impulse line to separate itself where the crack is and then give you problems. Then you set it back down, the hose closes up where the crack is and it runs fine. So it can be deceiving if somebody's not used to this. These hoses are cheap, they're under 10 bucks, well worth putting in anytime you've got your saw apart. It may be a bit of a pain to put in if you're not used to it, but you're going to notice huge improvements in the performance of your saw. Sometimes people ask me, what is the proper way to put the augers back into my snowblower? Well, always remember that they should be pointing this way, just like you see on this blower here. It's easy, after you've gotten everything apart, to get mixed up as to which auger went on which side of the whole system here. I've done it myself, I've put in the augers in the wrong way and when I went to use my blower it was actually blowing the snow in front of it. It wasn't even pushing the snow to the impeller for it to go out to shoot. So before taking it apart you can mark them or take a picture, actually a picture is way better than marking it and you also want to make sure that it's in the right way even if you use the same auger on the same side. It's really easy to make that mistake and then you have a lot of work to do to get it back on the right way. Like I said, I've done it myself and I haven't done it since. Once you do it, you're going to remember and you're going to take the precautionary steps to not do it again. So that'll be it for today's q and I want to thank you for taking the time today to come and watch my video. I also want to thank all you YouTubers who put up good constructive comments under my videos. It helps myself and all the other YouTubers watching as well. So when somebody comments, it helps somebody else learn something as well. So I really appreciate that, guys. 
Have a great weekend, and you'll see me in my next Q&A in two weeks.